And introducing in the red corner, in the white trunks with the blue and red stripes, weighing in at 226 and one half pounds, for the record of five and O oh with four knuckles, from Kitchener, Ontario, Good evening. I'd like both you gentlemen to keep your punches up at all times. Low blows or falls of any kind could cost you the round of the boat. If you gentlemen fall into a clinch and I ask you to break, I want you to break at my command. Is that understood? Shake hands now. Good luck to both of you. And the judges, Chuck Williams, Bobby Bell, and Frank Bullard. But will they be needed? The sixth professional fight of the tremendous heavyweight prospect, Lennox Lewis, against the 31-year-old, tubby, white, American Southpaw, Greg Gurrell, with a record of 21 wins and 60 feats. And every conceivable physical advantage here to Lewis. He's five inches taller and he's 24 pounds heavier at just over 16 stone. Well, Gorel already shaking his head from the effects of the long punches that are coming at him already. And Lewis seems to have a pretty open target, whether it's to the body or the head, that's a stumble. Well, even at this stage, early into the fight, it's difficult to see what sort of chance Gorilla's got here. You can see for yourself how difficult it's going to be for the man even to get near Lewis. All right, break. Lewis waiting for the chance to shoot the right across. Break. <laughs> Lennox hasn't opened up yet. That's the right hand, the one he's been waiting to shoot. Instant reaction. That hurt. And Gorel is already in some trouble. Opening round. Showing him the right again. Oh, what a good one. Driven right through. Well, he's got to his feet unsteadily early on. And there's a compulsory count. Well, you could have fooled me. Well, there may not be time for Lewis to finish it in this round. But the chance is there for him to finish it in the second. There's the bell. And Kitchener, Ontario, rises to greet their man's tremendous first round. And it was all done with one right hand, which he actually waved and showed to the man before he threw it. A bit flashy. There it goes. And then pile driven right through to the chin and it says something for Gorel's resilience that he actually got up at about three and was able to continue in fact Lewis might be a bit disappointed that he didn't get it over in the first round but it does say a lot for the strength of the white American and he's already up on his feet so a good start by Lewis now he needs to capitalize on it in the second round
Wait for the bell. Well, Gorel knows now, the Southpaw American knows exactly what's in store for him. And the one thing he must not do, if it can be avoided, is to take that right hand again to the chin. And Lewis is going to the finish. Well, when he's in action like this, he really does look like a good prospect. But, the roll seems to have escaped. A mark by the left eye. Let him go. Well, all hopes of winning this fight by Guerrero now, I would think, have gone out the window. It's purely a matter of survival now for the American. Let's go. Let him go. I wonder why Lewis isn't setting up another of those big attacks. Punch out, come on, punch out. I thought he was going to finish it when he had the man trapped in the corner. things in store than that for Burrell. I hope uh, Lennox Lewis isn't going to ease up here. Complacency, complacency can sometimes set in in a fight like this where you think you've got nothing to beat. You begin to take your time about it. And suddenly things slip away from you. Can happen. Let's go. Let's go. Plainly now. Come on. Right, so it looks very much as though Gorel is going to survive into the third round against all the odds. <laughs> and there's no question that Lewis has eased right off. Well, that'll be a disappointing second round for the Lennox uh, Lewis corner. They would have hoped that he would come out. There's Mum Violet. They would have hoped he would have come out and finished that, having set the man up in the first round, but he hasn't done it. So in we go to the third. Round three. Wait for the bell. Wait for the bell. Wait for the bell. Wait for the bell. I think he's made his point. And Garrell beginning to fight back a little bit, which just shows what happens when you let a man off the hook. Well, Lewis, is, Lewis has got himself a wonderful deal financially. He's being staked in his professional career by uh, a financial services company who gave him a six-figure signing on fee. And uh, they've got him a house in Crayford in Kent and a car, and he's getting 500 pounds a week living money. So he's got a good deal there, hitting and holding. He's beginning to lose his grip on this fight, Lewis. It's sad to see. But he was holding Garrell around the back of the neck with the left hand and hitting him with the right, and that, of course, is a foul. And he's doing it again. Let go, let go, cleanly now. This financial deal that uh, Lewis has got is very reminiscent of the one that Muhammad Ali had when he started his professional career. He had a syndicate of uh, wealthy Kentucky businessmen behind him. And... Uh, Lewis has got very much the same sort of deal, and it relieves the young man of any worries about what his purses are going to be over the first dozen or so fights. He can just get on with his work as a fighter. That's a good attack.
Lewis was in two Olympics. He was only 18 when he went to the All right, 84 Olympics in Los Angeles. And he lost in the quarterfinals there to Terrell Biggs, the man that uh, Gary Mason beat a few weeks ago in London. Third round. And this crowd beginning to urge Lennox Lewis on. They like what they saw in the first round. Now they want to see some more of it. Terrell conceding 24 pounds, remember. So much of that weight is uh, waste weight on Garrell. He really could slim down if he wanted to, to cruise away or possibly even to light heavy. He's only 5 feet 11. Three rounds have gone by, and Gorell is still there. A little booing coming from this crowd. And I suspect they're not too happy with what Lewis is doing. Now, this was the incident that uh, brought the referee's intervention here. He holds him around the back of the neck with the left hand, as you can see, turns him. And while he's still holding him, he gives him the right. And that was a blatant foul. And the referee moved in very quickly. And it was just as well that Gorell didn't go down at that point. Otherwise, the referee would have had a very difficult decision to make. Round four. Wait for the bell. Wait for the bell. Wait in your corner for the bell. Well, four rounds is as far as Lewis has uh, been taken in his pro career so far. Five fights completed. None of them got beyond the fourth. I wonder if this one will. Gorilla appeared very briefly in Europe last year. He had a fight in berck sur mer on the coast of northern France, and it lasted less than a round. He was beaten by Anaclay Wamba, the man from the Congo, who is a French citizen, and uh, Wamba stopped him inside a round with an eye injury. And Wamba, of course, has gone on to become the European Cruiserweight Champion. But here we are on the fourth, and Lewis still hasn't got rid of him. And the whistles are beginning to come now because people are sensing that uh, he's not going about his work as well as he might. He's become almost lethargic now, Lewis. It's quite amazing after the good start. Had him over in the first, threatened to stop him in the second. And now he really is messing about. He really can do a dramatic job when he wants to. In Seoul, for instance, in the Olympics, I saw him stop a very useful East German called Uli Kaden in only 34 seconds. But he's making very heavy weather of this. One on the break there, so a little foul from Gorel, but it was only a slap. <laughs> Lewis took Canadian citizenship when he went to Canada, but uh, he's now putting in for British citizenship again to have it restored, and I would think that will be granted. And I know that his English manager, Frank Maloney, hopes very much that before the end of 1990, Lewis will be challenging for the British Heavyweight Championship. Currently held, of course, by Gary Mason. But it looks as though Lewis is going to be taken into the fifth round for the first time.
And you have to say that this, so far, is a pretty disappointing performance by Lewis against an opponent who's easy to hit and who was all over the place in the first round. And John Davenport, the trainer, is giving him a little bit of a talking to. Well, he needs a talking to, just to liven him up a bit. That's Frank Maloney leaning in from the left. And that corner now getting just a bit anxious about his performance. And they clearly want something a bit better. So he's going to enter a new territory. Never been into the fifth round before. Seconds out. Quick for the bell. Now let's see whether he takes any notice of the talking to. Well, that's better. It looks as though he needed a little bit of a G up from the corner. And he's going about his work a lot better now. If only he just kept the punches shorter. Oh, that was a good right hand. And he's cut. Garrell is cut by the left eye, and he's in trouble. Another right, and he's over for the second time. That's a bad cut. I don't think he's going to get any further. Okay, you don't want to quit. He couldn't go on with that eye. And he's cut on the nose as well. And so, Lewis marks up win number six in 51 seconds of the fifth round. Mum's delighted and his next uh, assignment will be a match with Noel Qualis of England in England late in January. Win number six as a pro for the young heavyweight prospect born in West Ham, London, who went to Canada, who has finished Garrell here. Garrell shook his head there saying, no, you haven't got me. But in fact he had and it only took one more right hand to prove it. badly and just a human punching bag at this stage and that was quite enough for everybody one more look at this finish he had nothing left at all Garrell all the punches were coming through and uh, the referee Ladies I think could have stepped in the even by technical knockout at 51 seconds of the fifth round still undefeated so here's the young heavyweight prospect who is going to make his home and his career in Britain and one hopes that he'll go a very long way indeed.